So if you're going to plan to do it on the phone, I would suggest you not booking that phone appointment and try to get, get a one call close now. So welcome to the agent Q&A. You got your host, John and Joanne. Hi, everyone. Anything new with contracting as far as the ILC, the NLC? No, I'm not. Nothing's pretty much new. Everything's remaining the same for now. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. uh, coming up soon, within about two to three weeks, we have the convention. If you guys haven't booked anything yet, um, FFLconvention.com. Book your flights, book your stays. Hotels are not bad. 100 something, 150 per night. Yeah, I heard some of the flights are also pretty cheap. Yeah, so LA. LA flights, I mean, you don't want to go spirit, but it's like a hundred something one way. <laughs> you can get a hundred, two hundred dollars to you know, both ways. Yeah. Uh we booked our, our um jet blue nonstop five hours, less than two hundred and fifty dollars. Oh. So it's definitely worth it because for the amount of speakers that they're they're paying for that we get to to, to watch, um Jocko, um, Dave Anderson, um the lady, um, top flight lady, I forgot her name. Um, they also have Alex Rodriguez. Is he still doing? A Rod. Who else yeah. is there? Definitely, definitely worth it. <clears throat> but more importantly, for your career in this business, if you want to see yourself grow, and if you have any any inkling of doubt or any questions you may have, one you get you get to see the top speakers, you know, top producers, top managers speak about it. But more importantly, you're going to be in the trenches with all these other people. So during the break, during the time lunch breaks, you can go up to some some managers, VPs, board members, multimillionaires, and just ask them the right questions. You know, whatever you feel like you're stuck in, somebody in that <laughs> that room, <laughs> that stadium will have that answer. So feel free to make sure you guys go on an FFL convention if you guys haven't done so far. But uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, go ahead and fire away any questions you may have for us. All right. Ooh. Yeah, I was doing my calls and, uh, but I saw your, uh, your thing there. Gosh. Okay. There we go. Nice. Where do you, where do you call out of Florida? No, uh, Las Vegas. Ah, uh, okay. Weather's nice now. Uh, well, no, it's really windy and overcast and cold. Mm. Uh -oh. Yeah, that's all right. We can't complain. Yeah. Let's get a little bit of background from you. So you're, you're in Nevada. Um, are you doing all telesales? Um, no, I just did. Uh, uh, recently, I did a couple sales in person. It was the same guy. He got, he got two uh, whole lives. And, uh, um, but about 90% of them are. I tried, okay, so you know, uh, yeah, I'm doing New Jersey now and Tennessee. Okay. But um, uh, I, I'm thinking of switching more to Las Vegas so I can do more one-on-ones, you know, mm -hmm. in person. How many states do you have? Three. Three? Okay. Yeah, that, that's enough for now. I want to, you know, make sure I, uh, you know, get uh, appointments with leads. You know, I don't, it's, I'm getting plenty of leads now, more leads than I have been getting. So I'm doing a little better, but. Oh, that's good. Go yeah, and I'm going to full time because uh, my daughter is now driving herself. I have a 16 year old daughter. Uh... So yeah, so now I'll be working full time. Yeah, you got to also add uh, those those insurance premiums, those car insurance premiums on a on a kid. Oh man, <laughs> like almost yeah. five hundred to a thousand a month. Oh, uh, it's it's yeah, it's it's it was uh, two eighty extra a month for her. She because she's a female, mm -hmm. you know. So that's still significant. Yeah, <laughs> so you we got to add some extra sales. Yeah. Okay, what made you choose Tennessee and uh, New Jersey? Well, I, I chose New Jersey for referral in Las Vegas, her, okay. um, her sister-in-law. And uh, so I called her up, uh, got licensed, and uh, I've been selling in New Jersey now. And then uh, I had a gentleman I was, I was uh, speaking to, and I sold him. But he says, well, I'm in Tennessee. I go, oh, you're visiting? He goes, no, I'm in Tennessee. And I says, well, it says here, New Jersey. Okay, sorry about that. I'll have to get licensed there and then I'll help you. Don't worry about it. So I did. I went and got licensed uh, over the weekend. I mean, Friday and then Monday I had my license. Okay. So, okay. Uh, yeah, I sold him. So awesome. I just started so there. Yeah. Okay. So as far as leads, so, so the way you're, you're attacking is once you get a referral out of state, then you add the license out of state. Yeah, why not? You know, um, I ha you also have any... had to... Go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Well, I just had another one in Ohio, but uh, he hasn't been answering the phone. You know how that goes. So, yeah. So, by the way, so just to let you guys know, um, 
I, I've heard this. So with Americo, you can actually sell the client and then get the, get the license that same day as well. Uh, because what they do is they, it's, it's on a hold anyways. So once you make a sale, but it's your first sale within that state, they typically put that on hold. Then they review your license to make sure you're licensed for that day. So, and then you get paid usually five, 10 days, maybe oh, a week good. later. So yeah, um, it's, it's, it's sort of like uh, some of the carriers that uh, you, you have to make a, uh, a sale first and then yes. they contract you. Yeah. yeah. As right, you guys right. know. <laughs> same thing, same thing with prosperity. So I made a sale in Ohio. Um, I've had my Ohio license because I have agents down there. But since it's my first sale in Ohio, it's taken a little bit longer. They double check. Um, back end, really behind the scenes, the carrier itself pays for an appointment fee on behalf of the agent. Some carriers pay that out of pocket. Some carriers put that on behind behind the scenes on your, your advances. America, you'll see that. <laughs> America charges you for it. <laughs> Prosperity mm. doesn't. So once you once you finally make a sale, they do a just in just in time uh, contracting in a sense. Mm. But uh, as far as your lead drip, uh, what I was getting at is, do you, do you, are you buying leads in those states then, since not at your license? Yeah, um, I uh, I just put that. I've been using hometown quotes and also the CRM, and okay. you know I haven't requested any in Tennessee yet for both of those. But I'm going to. Well, actually, I did. I'm sorry, I did on the CRM, and uh, I had one that she she was uh, a Mennonite, and yeah. she yeah, and uh, she no didn't social. have a social security number. Right. Remember that one? Yeah, yeah. I think you might have uh, last I remember uh, that. a while back. Yeah, and so uh, they'll still they'll still have to help them. But uh, she ended up not doing it because she was afraid that. Uh, her beneficiaries would be the church and they wouldn't accept it because it was government money or, mm. you know, not. Yeah. So anyway, I called another lead in Tennessee and she knew her, you know, <laughs> it was really weird. Yeah. How ironic. So out of the whole yeah. state of Tennessee, it was like a neighbor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I've been thinking about, you know, well, hopefully they're not all related, but uh, anyway, no, <laughs> but uh, anyway, so yeah, you know, I, I, I got to get it in Tennessee because it just sounds real interesting, you know. Yeah, Jason Steiner, one of my agents, he he works out of Tennessee. He's close to Nashville, um, like uh, about thirty minutes south of it. I forgot Thompson Station, something Station, Jackson Station, something like that. Um, so he he does field infield. Um, he hardly does telesales, so he does he would do some, but most of the time he drives out. He he does yeah he does CRM leads out there. Yeah, I, I, I'd rather do one on one. You know, I try to push that when it's in uh, Clark County in Las Vegas. Mm, so, yeah. But, uh, you know, you, you just, uh, you know, you, you develop a rapport with him. And I've got one that calls me his friend. Um, he's up in Pioch, Nevada, and we've never met in person, but we text each other every day. Like, you know, he's a pastor, so we text each other scriptures oh, and nice. stuff. Nice. Yeah. So he calls Are you me getting... his huh? Are you getting referrals from him? I asked Especially him, I said, if you know anybody, but I didn't push it, you know, but uh, what happened was I got his wife uh, with American Amicable. Okay. Uh, this is a couple of years ago now, and maybe almost, and then him too. But then American Amicable came back and says, well, we can give him the, the um, less coverage because of his medical for the same amount of premium. Mm -hmm. And I says, well, you know, I don't think he's going to go for that. Let me just, you know, let me get back to him. But uh, so in the meantime, she says, you can go ahead and dispute that. So I says, okay, I'll dispute it, you know, and I won the dispute. But then I found him foresters for better coverage with accidental death and uh, lower premium. So he, he found that out. So we've been friends ever since, you know. So you got him appro approved with uh, Plan Right. Yeah, Plan Right. Yeah, I like Plan yes. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, I got him approved with that. And he found out that I could have made more money if I would have just stuck with the original one, you know. <laughs> but, uh, you know, so. That's good. He, he, you looked out for him and he, he appreciated that. But what, what I was going to say is um, back in our old company, especially dealing with like church members, especially with the pastor, parishioners, priests, bishops, you know, they care about their church a lot, right? Um, and sometimes the church hurts because there's family members or there, you know, churchgoers that pass away and there's no money. They have to help out, you know, they, they pitch in or sometimes they do a memorial service for them, you know, for free. 
mm-hmm. all those things. So you should introduce to them this thing called a legacy plan. That's how we used to call it. Okay. It's a legacy plan. If you feel, you know, you're already offering guides, you, you know, you're, you're giving church donations, bring up the idea of, would you like to create a legacy for the church? Just in case you pass away, you can buy a life insurance and then you can put down the church as the beneficiary. Ah. So if the church has a trust, if the church has an estate, they can put that down and then the church benefits. So it's like an ongoing monthly donation, but when they do pass on, the church benefits. Yeah, and I can, I can, uh, that's, that sounds awesome. That sounds awesome. And I can also ask them, uh, do you have any parishioners that have passed Yes. That didn't have any coverage, you know, and that that I could help, you know, so that the other ones don't get stuck the way they did, you know. Right. And another way, too, is that if there's only a few employees for the church using the church's treasury, they can buy a life insurance on behalf of that member. And then mm. the member's beneficiary would be the church again. Yeah. Okay? And then, you know, if they're young enough, you can set up IULs where it could be a pension plan as well. So the church pays for it. It's a life insurance on them and the church is the beneficiary. But if it builds up enough and they put in 20, 30 years into the church, they transfer ownership on that life insurance and they, they take out systematic withdrawals. It's like a pension for them mm. paid for by the church. Uh, that's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, so you can bring those things and those ideas up to, to them where it's a win-win situation. So if you're a yeah, full-timer at the church, there's not a lot of uh, 401ks, <laughs> 403Bs yeah, available, right? <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, um, there's only about 25, 30 people in his uh, in his parish or whatever, his church. Uh-huh. So, but still, and they're all, most are older, you know. There you go. So, but anyway, yeah, that's a great idea. Those are good ideas. I yeah, wrote so, them down. I mean, not I- a- 2025 20, members and if they're they're elderly that 2025 20, is going to dwindle down yeah <laughs> that church is going to go down yeah he's got some younger ones that just came on but yeah basically okay. it's older crowd yeah. yeah there you go so good ideas yeah. yeah see what you could do especially what i what i'm getting at is for for agents new agents that are building um i just want to expand their their minds as far as getting leads but turning leads into relationships that you've created And then once you have these relationships, well, let's go back to how you created that relationship about life insurance. So keep expanding the life insurance into that relationship, into other relationships. And you're going to create your referral market that way. Yeah, I need to, I need to work on my referral market a lot more, you know, especially uh, clients that uh, uh, gentlemen, I couldn't help this week because he ended up, uh, he he was all ready to go. He just had to think about it. So I set up another appointment. Mm -hmm. And uh, he uh, ended up looking into the VA and the VA because he had a VA disability was able to get insurance without medical qualifications and at a pretty reasonable price. I could beat the price a couple times, but it, it was only for 10 year term. He wanted whole life, you know, mm. and so. Uh, what type of uh, life insurance is it? Is it SBLI or? Oh, um I don't know. Uh, I got it here somewhere. I got everything filed away here, but uh, he, it was, oh God, what was it? VA something automatic. Oh, it was for ones that were exposed to agent orange. That was one of the qualifications. Yeah. 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 So one of those special ones. Yeah. I mean, he would have been a really good, it was like his premium would have been about like two thirty four a month or something like that, you know? Jeez. Yeah. He was ready to, Agent Orange uh, victims, they, they have some crazy payouts. Yeah, they do. Yeah. So the, they deserve it too, you know? Oh, yeah. Most I was in Vietnam issues. during that time. I mean, I was in the service during Vietnam. So, uh, you know, uh, I've seen the guys when they came back, you know, what kind of shape they were in mentally too. Yeah. Most of, most of the time their lungs are like collapsed. <laughs> it's bad. Yes, the COPD. Yeah, I, I had one. I sold him a... Uh, uh, a guaranteed issue, uh, AIG, and I tried to get him Trans America, and that was stupid. That was when I first started, uh, <laughs> you know, because it's all medical, and he had so many issues. He didn't tell me he had COPD till I was doing the application. I asked uh, him geez. in the interview, you know, but I'm doing the application. I go, okay, no COPD. He goes, oh, yeah, I have COPD. I went, you know, <laughs> but uh, I helped him, you know, and he was really good, uh, but that's all I could do is the guaranteed issue with him, you know? 
So yeah, so when you turn a, a non-sale into that, what what's your next pivot? What would you say to try to get more referrals? Oh, um, yeah, you know, I tried to get his wife, but you know, he was just worried about himself. And I asked about his children, you know, and I says, well, you know, if they need help, let me know. But I, I think I need to do more. I've been thinking about this lately. More with uh, one of the other companies I left was, and you'll probably know who it was, but they had scripts, and they would say at the end, okay. Um, uh, you have anybody that I could help, you know, any relatives and, and then you ask them, you write them down and then you say, okay, uh, what's their phone number? Do you want to give them a call for me? So I don't, you know, uh, catch them off guard, you know, and you do that in the house. Right. You know, so that, that's an idea, you know, that's. Do you bring, uh, your laptop? What do you use when you're, you're in the field? Well, thank God I don't have my laptop anymore. I use a tablet because a laptop, you always have to email, email, email. And with a tablet, right. they just sign it there, you know, and get a lot of old, older people that aren't tech savvy, you know. Yeah. So what I would suggest then is so on your tablet, get a little bit of post-it and even just tape that in yeah. and put and make an, it's a reminder, a physical reminder to say, ask for referrals. Yeah. So because yeah. we all know what to do. We all know how, how to do it. But we just forget sometimes you pack up, you leave. So as soon as you start packing up and it's like visible right there, ask for referrals. <laughs> and then you come back and say, what do you, who else do you know that needs life insurance? Who can we help out with? Well, especially if you've gone through three carriers with one client, you know, he got denied. And then the other one is they wanted more information, prosperity, I think, or no, Aetna, is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I have them going through American Amicable right now through underwriting, but, uh, you know, after you go through three carriers, you're like, okay, well, uh, you know, I got to get out of here because I've taken this guy's time too long, you know? Right. What's your primary, your initial carrier that, that you're using first? Um, you know what? Uh, I, I've been doing it wrong. I'm starting to change. I used to do homework. I'd set the appointment and do homework and try to give them comparisons, you know, instead mm -hmm. of just narrowing it down to three, you know? So I've been doing more of that. Um prosperity mutual of omaha you know for whole life um and when they're smokers i go right to americo eagle premier beats them all out you know and uh when it's uh you know when when they say well it's too much i go well hold on let me check something here and i'll go to transamerica as a last resort you know because uh they're you even self. though they're non-medical a lot of times they'll still ask for stuff you know that yes so um but my big problem is no shows, no call, no shows. You know, you set up an appointment. They're not, you know, they're busy. They're busy. So you set up an appointment and then they don't answer their phone. Right. You know, well, what would you recommend in a, in a situation like that? Anything I can do? Yeah. So this is a funny uh, scenario. So I counted my appointments last week. Mm -hmm. I had 22 appointments. I had four presentations <laughs> and a lot of them were telesales. A lot of them were phone appointments. Um, the in-persons I got to meet, I got to see. Um, but I, I did one for two uh, or two for four, 50%, yeah. but I got four presentations and how can, so I'm in the same boat as you, right? So how, what can I do? What can I expand on? Um, first things first, let's look at your, your method. Are you booking to see them in person or are you booking to, to sell them on the phone? Well, if it's in Las Vegas, I try to I try to book him in person. But okay. if it's in New Jersey, of course, or um, Northern Nevada or uh, Tennessee, I have to do it on the phone. Okay. So if you're going to plan to do it on the phone, I would suggest you not booking that phone appointment and try to get get a one call close now. Okay. Yeah. So then let's go back into your your booking script. Okay. How are you? What are you saying? And how are you booking it? Well, I'll try to do it without my script in front of me because usually I'll put it up there just as a guide, you know? Right, right, right. Well, what would you say to me? Let's say uh, I am um, a phone appointment you want to book. What is oh. your... Hi, okay. Bill. Is this Bill? Yeah. Oh, hi, Bill. I'm James Holtz. I've been trying to get a hold of you um, uh, or it depends on if I'm trying to get a hold of him or it's a first call. Um, no, no, just just go through the part oh. where you're booking already. So oh, what, okay. what are my options when you're booking? Okay, yeah, so... Oh, okay, when I'm booking... Okay, so um, um, I got it. It's hard to do it. Uh, oh, no worries, no worries. Client. You don't have um, to be perfect. <laughs> yeah. All right. So um, are you an AM or PM kind of person to take care of this kind of stuff? I'm a PM. Okay. Okay. Let's see what I got here. How about, okay, today's Monday. 
How about tomorrow, uh, 2 p.m. your time? Does that work for you? Or I've got a 4 p.m. Um, which one works best for you? Okay. So you're, so what's happening is if it's a phone appointment, you're booking into another day. You're already doing phones. Okay. So I would, I would, my suggestion would be to try to do a one call close where Brandon Kitchings had this in the script. Because of the pandemic, because of how, how we do things now, because of the, the COVID, however you say it, they give us three options to take care of you, Jim. Okay. So James, I can either one, meet with you in person. It takes about 10 to 15 minutes. Okay. Two, if you don't prefer that, we could do a Zoom appointment. Okay. I go on Zoom, you go on Zoom, we can see each other face to face. Or three, if you have some time right now, I could take care of this over the phone. That only takes about five to 10 minutes as well. Do you have mm. a few minutes right now? Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, great. And then, then you would qualify after they say that they're available now. Okay. Is it just for you? Or is it for you and a spouse that you want your spouse to be there? Cause now you have to qualify if it's one legged or not. Yeah. Say that again. I'm sorry. Qualify if it's one legged, if they okay. need to have their spouse there or not. Okay. If, it, if they do want the spouse there, then that's when you would want to book a, a phone appointment. But what okay. I would do is try booking that phone appointment on the spot or later yeah. on that day. Yeah, I've been noticing that you, you've been talking about that lately um, yeah. on the Zoom calls. Yeah, that's a great idea. Because what's happening is you do the next day. Well, you got a hold of them now. <laughs> right. if, they can, if you can keep them in, in a conversation now, sell it now. Mm -hmm. Right. So now that gives you the ability to, to sell almost every day instead of booking for a, for a phone day to a field day. Right. Good. Right? Good. Yeah. That'll cut down on my no call, no shows, I call them. Yeah. So my, my issue is the reason why I have four out of 22 is because I have a caller. My caller is booking appointments for me, but she's booking phone appointments for the next day, like a field day. So I get, mm -hmm. I get jumbled up because I have a field appointments. Like for example, today I have two field appointments at one and two and then have phone, phone appointments three, four, and then a field appointment at five. <laughs> so sometimes I have a gap in between. And then, so I would, I'll be yeah. in the field, have a phone appointment that don't pick up I'm stuck <laughs> and then go back to the field again. Yeah, I, I try to make them the, um, as soon as possible. If they'll do it that night, even though it's a, a phone day, I'll yeah. do it. You know, if yeah. it works better, because yeah, right. Cause, so try yeah. to push. So your 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 method then is to first push a phone appointment into a phone presentation now. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the second yeah. part is for your no show in the field. Okay, how how far apart are you booking them? So if if it's today is Monday, what is your latest day you're booking an appointment? Well, I try to do it the next day. I say, well, you know what? I'm around. Uh, I'll be in your area, you know, okay. Tuesday. But if they say, well, I'm not off till uh, Thursday, I'll say, okay, uh, which works best for you? I'll, I'll, I'll feel, I'll, I'll fit you in. But okay. is there any reason why you're not going to be there? You know, because, uh, you know, I had a gentleman, the one I just sold him a couple policies. He told me, well, should I meet you at my mom's house? Because I told him where I was. You know, we were chatting. You know. Oh, nice. I was like about. Oh, I don't know, 20 miles away, which is nothing okay. in, in uh, California, you know, right. but yeah. yeah. Well, 20 so, miles, man, 20 from miles Long Beach to like downtown Dodger Stadium oh is 20 God. miles, but it's two hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah, two like, hours. There may not be anything out there at Vegas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's probably 40 minutes in Vegas, but uh, uh, anyway, fun, he yeah. was really nice about it. And he says, I'll meet you at Starbucks. I'll meet you at okay. my mom's. I go, no, it's cool. I, I enjoy the drive, you know? And uh, he called me up. I called him. Yeah, I called him up to check on him, you know, even though he was approved and everything. And I says, hey, did you get your policies yet? That's a big deal because yes. I had a gentleman that never got his policies. They dropped the ball. Mutual of Omaha. And uh, I sold him, uh, um, what was it? Tr uh, American Amicable too. Mm -hmm. And uh, he never got either one of them. And I've, you know, so I, I start following up now to make sure they got their policies. You know, he so was going to say- yeah, he says I'm just gonna I'm just gonna let it go. I don't want him. And I went, oh, I'm sorry. Let me, you know, I'll take care of it. You know, I talked him out of it. So I I got one emailed to me and I printed it out, put it in a nice binder, and took it over to him until I got the other one sent to me. You know, there you go. But the so mail is yeah. Go ahead. Your follow up on your one week follow ups for that. That's also another another opportunity for you to ask for referrals. Yes. Or yeah. or a follow up on the referrals that you couldn't get a hold of. Hey, you gave me Joanne's number. I gave Joanne a call when you're delivering the policy or you're talking to them. Can you give them a ring again? Cause I haven't been able to get a hold of them. Right. I want to help them out if I can. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, 
Good so going stuff. back to your field presentation um, appointment, you only want to try to book within the first two days, right? Because after mm-hmm. three days, it's going to be a high no show. Yeah. So yeah. if it's past three days, I, I say to my clients, I'm going to pencil you in, but I'm going to call you the day before for a reminder. Yeah, I do that. Past, past two, two days, they're going to forget. Yeah, but they don't answer on the on their reminders usually. <laughs> yeah. So at least yeah. leave a voicemail. I wouldn't leave a voicemail or a text. I do hey. both. I do both. Yeah. I text them and I, I text them my credentials too. You know, and then I, I'll text them and say, Hey, I just tried to call you for a 10 o'clock appointment. I know you're probably running behind. So just give me a call when you get this message. All right. Mm-hmm. You know. So yeah. so what do you do on your no shows when you're in the field? Uh if I'm out in the field, I I'll I'll do some um uh drive bys, you know. Okay. Yeah. And I'm trying to think about dedicating like Friday afternoon to do drive bys, you know, and uh, and I went out uh, last week and I did um, three drive bys before I picked my daughter up from school and uh, and I got uh, two appointments out of them, but uh, hey. none of them panned out. Yeah. yeah. Well, at least those are two additional appointment activities that you wouldn't mm-hmm. have had. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Well, adding those things help out. So if you do get no showed, um, do, you have business cards, right? Get what? Yeah, business cards. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would purposely leave the business card with the note saying, hey, you missed me for our appointment right on, on top of the doorknob. Yeah. So leave it there. If you're still in the field, I would come back a few hours later to see if that card's been picked up or not. Yeah, good if I idea. still see the card, that means they didn't come back home. If it's picked up, I just stop by saying, hey, I was here for our appointment. I'm here yeah, now. Good, good idea, yeah. Yeah. So, so. – because once you're no-showed, you're no-showed. You can only look at what you can control on it, what you could yeah. have said, or if it was an emergency or not. But put it this way, Jason said it this way, the best. They owe you that appointment. So any given point in time you're in the area, hey, you owe me an appointment. You booked with me and you weren't home. Yeah. Take care of this. It's still activity. Right. Yeah. Opportunities, yeah. Yeah, I went through a bad spell here lately, and now it's starting to get better. But uh, now, now that I'm going to be full time, I plan on really making some headway. That's good. That's good. And yeah. then going back to what you were saying about the homework and the quotes and whatnot, you want to look at it more from the the client side. Yes, we're the broker. Yes, we represent thirty plus different companies, and yes, we can quote with the lowest price that we feel like. But from the agent standpoint, I mean, uh, the client standpoint, the client. Is ignorant. They don't know any pricing differences. They just see things, but they know just like any any commercials out there. There's the commercial ad, the commercial price, and what the real price is, right? So once they're finally in, if it's only a few dollars of a difference, you want to save yourself a headache. You don't want to try to do a lot of policies and carriers that will send you to underwriting, because you'll end up having the two three policies left and right. For what? For a few cents of a difference? So well, actually, I made a big difference, but it took three months on one Transamerica client. You did a fully underwritten. Yeah, yeah. Big. Yeah. Well, they they decided to make him fully underwritten, and uh, even though he fit in the guidelines where he didn't have to be, because they they you know they do that. And it took, well, he missed two appointments. That took two weeks longer. Mm-hmm. It was his fault, but they didn't have enough underwriters. And it was in, they says, we will in September, we'll have more, we're hiring more and blah, blah, blah. Right. But, you know, it was like $2,400 sale because he had two uh, policies for, uh, well, he ended up settling for 400000 each, but it took months, you know? So yeah, and, so in those situations, I would I would lean towards the carriers that'll approve on the spot. If you're dealing yeah. dealing with final expense, three main yeah. carriers that we're pushing is a miracle, prosperity, and AIG. Yeah. It's a hundred percent instant underwriting decision. So yeah. how do you overcome and battle mutual of Oma? May might might be a little bit cheaper. Well, I tell them, look, this is what's the best about this is why I choose this company. That's how I say it. Okay. Out of all these carriers that I represent, that's my line. I'm choosing prosperity. The greatest thing about this, it gives you an answer on the spot. It gives you an answer as soon as we run your prescription history in the middle. Before we even put down your bank account information, it's going to tell me if you're approved or not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I That's like, why I like choosing them. Yeah. Okay. The only thing is, you know, they, that's the only one he could afford in his budget for um, 500,000 and 500,000, which he ended up selling wow. for 400, 400. And Transamerica is a lot cheaper than most of them. But uh, what's that? 
on for term. their term yeah for their term yeah and uh hey um uh oh well, we lost sean I, I wanted to make sure they could chime in whenever they wanted to but i'm enjoying the feedback right now yeah so. <laughs> um, yeah so which term product are you using a lot for transamerica um uh super and sometimes uh living benefits you know i've okay. sold yeah i've sold quite a few of those and well, uh, what's your turnaround trendsetter time? um i've had about two or three not go through Mm -hmm. You know, because of the client's fault on one end because they didn't get the paperwork that they needed from their doctors and stuff like that. But basically, um, and I've had a couple denied. I'm sorry, I did. Um, that uh, the one of them being the uh, veteran I was telling you about. Yeah. That I I had to get him AIG. You know. And um, uh, but usually it's it's at least two thirds have gone through, but it takes okay, so awesome. long. Yeah. We. I per personally don't like to use that carrier so much because yeah. of the extra homework, the extra yeah. follow-up and the extra this and that. Yeah. I Have you my tried tail using off. NLG? Yeah. I just started using them. In fact, that's the one I sold in Tennessee. Okay. And, yeah. And so I just started, I, I like their uh, IULs, you okay. know, and uh, their term is competitive. Yes. Yeah. So, and their term uh, does not require a physical for up to, two million dollars on but on any age or a 50 and under up to two million 50 to 60 and un, uh, under a million okay all right 60 to 65 you can get up to two hundred fifty thousand without a physical okay yeah I, I, i've got that somewhere i saved it yeah yeah so i mean you you're still in their control uh, they're still in control of you know what rating you'll have but at least that'll eliminate a lot of the the physical appointment setups and you know delays and no shows of that so mm -hmm. they they do a soft pull on credit that makes a difference sometimes from preferred to premier mm -hmm. um but then they just get the doctor records and you get an answer typically within 10 days mm -hmm. yeah that, that's good i'm i'm, I'm gonna lean towards them that you mentioned yeah. it and i've been i've been breaking into them too and doing a lot of iuls and in, in some terms with them yeah, and they're very lenient with their their um, lower table class ratings for clients because they have two un substandard ratings. They have NT one and NT two, oh. so you can you can sell diabetic clients with term with them. Wow, okay, so I didn't know that. Yeah, NT one it will be double the price of a standard standard rate, and then NT two will be triple the price. But you okay. can run into these diabetic clients that thought they've never been approved for anything, and then they get approved for that. Yeah, yeah, and and of course, whole life is good with Mutual of Omaha with diabetics and Foresters uh, mm -hmm. plan right for whole yeah. life. But yeah, for a term though, these are big big case clients that are feeling like they've never gotten a chance with term, right? Yeah, and, and their standard rates are competitive, so double the price for a standard rate is still not bad. No, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Appreciate yeah. that. So that'll be a lot less of a homework for you of following up doctor records, additional questionnaires and nothing like that. <laughs> yeah. Well, what I, I think that the key thing for what I need to do is also um, focus less on homework and more on trying to uh, get immediate, immediate sale. What do we yes. call it? Um, yeah. Simplified issues got to be your best friend. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Because then, then I'm wasting time doing homework and checking all these carriers out when yes. I could be making more calls. Exactly. <laughs> you should almost have most of your sales as a one-stop shop type of thing, like one and done. Right. <laughs> and then well, okay. if you haven't used Ethos, uh -huh. Ethos is pretty good too. Well, I've, I've tried. A... Yeah, I haven't got any uh, bites on Ethos, you know. Mm -hmm. But I, I need to refer them to Ethos maybe if if I can't help them right away, right? Right, because so Ethos is specializing on term. Okay, they can go up to two million dollars, no physical, similar to NLG, but their oh. underwriting takes like five minutes. Oh, okay. So client applies, client does all the work, they'll get an answer, they put in the bank account information, you're done. Um, but then it'll drop it from Ethos term to like Emeritus to like Banner to like True Stage. So it'll it'll pivot for you. Yeah, I got I got approved with them. I just was wanting to check it out. They suggest you do that. Yes. Yeah. And um but then they did one um on me or uh they were practicing on my um 
on my profile. And I was like, uh-huh. who's this a client? He got sold. What happened? You know, and they were just practicing. I called them up. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they clicked yeah, on your it. link. Yeah, yeah, try it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll have to try it. And what I used to do, and I haven't done it lately, is all the clients that were no call, no show, or didn't answer, and yes. I, I've been trying, I would just send them to Ethos, Ethos, yes. Ethos with my uh, email, you know, link. Right. So I even do a text on that. I tell them, hey, we had an appointment, James. Um, if oh. you're still interested in life insurance, give me a call back. But if you want to quote yourself, just click on this link. That's my text response to them. Okay. So yeah, you'll get something out of that eventually. Yeah. If you want to quote yourself. So instead of even applying, just say quote yourself. So at least they'll be interested in seeing a price. And if they want to move forward, the ethos will tell them, do you want to apply now? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Yeah. Very good. Do you have any other questions? Uh, just one more. Um, sure. Live transfers. I, yeah. I, I don't know how that works. Um, it, I guess you you get a hold of a, of a lead system and then you tell them that you, you you find out what they have on live transfers and then they they send it to you. Uh, how does that work? Okay, so live transfer is a it's a type of lead vendor. Yeah. Okay. So one one example would be all web leads. Okay. okay. Uh, there's a website I want to uh, have you write down. It's called FFLVirtualSales.com. Oh, okay. It'll have a lot of the trainings. It'll have a lot of um, it's it's the the main the main training for telesales. It'll have a lot of lead vendors in there. Okay. FFL Virtual Sales. And one of them is all web leads. How that works, it's a vendor. They do their work. They do the marketing. They do the, the client reach out. And then they have um, telemarketers calling their, their leads. Once the telemarketer speaks to a lead and the lead has a conversation with them, they try to funnel them to an agent. So then they'll say, you know, do you have time right now to speak with an agent? Five, 10 minutes. Um, sometimes they have verification calls. They have like qualifying questions. Sometimes they don't. And then once they have a live client available, they will then auction that client to multiple agents that subscribed to them. And that's where their price can go up. So okay. they can have a minimum of $60 per lead. But if I'm on and Joanne's on and Joanne says she's willing to pay 65, then it'll go to Joanne. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's based on the subscription model and an auctioning price. My camera. Okay. I got it can you. go up. Like JP's doing great on it. Trent's doing great on it. Um, who else is who's on now? Like Casey's on it. So they made a few sales earlier. Mm-hmm. But it can it can stack up on you. So what JP says is you need to be able to do at least two out of five. Really to be sustainable, you got to be selling three out of five. Because imagine if each one was like going up to a hundred dollars per sale. I mean per per transfer, five conversations were 500 bucks <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so you sell one which sometimes could be an aig policy you might not be <laughs> breaking even right yeah. <laughs> yeah so two to three would be profitable for you okay yeah thanks for answering that yeah Uh-oh. a lot more information on fflvirtualsales.com yeah i'll go on there yeah yeah so, all right thanks Thank for hopping you. on yeah anybody um last comments last word yeah, thanks for hopping on. Um, we'll have this broadcasted live, um, well, not live, but um, saved on YouTube. Go ahead and please subscribe and like. We're going to build up our uh, our YouTube uh, channel. So please uh, feel free to share it to anyone. Have a good one. Thank okay. you both. Thanks, Bye. Guys. Thank you. Bye.